How can I say Salam, my name is Ali. Um, I was born in the city of Isfahan, Iran. I currently live in Toronto, Canada, in the province of Ontario. I am 35 years old and I work as an art director in the field of advertising. I just got back from Arbaeen, Karbala. It was the most amazing experience ever. You truly, if you've never been, you have to go. Um, there's nothing like it. Um, really hard to describe the feeling. Um, but what, what, uh, one word that comes to mind is love. Love for uh, Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. Especially when you're walking from Najaf to Karbala and you see so many people walk on that highway uh, for three days straight. Um, you sleep, you get up, you get on the highway again. And that's when I uh, realized, wow, this is love. Um, it just, uh, it moves you. Um, there's no other experience in the world like it. Um, you know, you, you, uh, you sleep uh, in a mocap, um, either a tent or a building by the side of the road, and then you wake up, and when you wake up, there's already people on the highway walking, and you reflect you kind of take a moment and think, wow, this is love, you know. Um, we haven't even seen this man, Imam Hussein Ali Salam. What is it? What is it about this man? Why is it that so many people walk from Najaf to Karbala? I mean, us, I mean, but you have people from Basra, all these places, one week, two weeks, three weeks, they walk on foot to get to Karbala to give their salams. We have not seen this man, um, but the love is there. It's, it's, it's such a miracle. And it's, uh, as a Shia, we are so lucky to have that love for the Ahl al-Bayt, Ali Salam. Uh, so when I came back to, to Toronto, when I came back home, the first thing I told my mother was, I want to go back again. I want to go back again. That was the first thing. And I remember calling her because they always say, you know, if you need something, make dua, but then tell your parents to pray for you. So I called my mother. I said, you know, please pray for me. I want to go back. I know it's very stressful for you. You worry, all that stuff, but please, I want to go back one more time. That's all I wanted. I wanted to go back one more time. And uh, inshallah, I've made the intention to go back um, this coming April. Um, and uh, I'm so looking forward to it. Um, I can't wait to go back again. Um, I, it's Again, it's really hard to explain the meaning. The people watching, the people that have gone to Ziyada will know what I'm talking about. Um, and you have to go and experience for yourself. So we're on the subway right now. We're going westbound. Uh, we're going to this Iranian brunch place called Takhta Tabus. We'll have Kalapajia. I'm here with one of my friends. Um, so it's Jan 2nd. Um, the city's waking up early. And then uh, this is usually my routine. Uh, every, uh, Monday to Friday, uh, we're going to work. I get on the subway and uh, as 
a freelance art director. I work at various uh, agencies in town. So I get off at different uh, subway stations. So as a freelance art director, uh, my schedule is very flexible. It's up to me. So when I went to Ziada the first time, uh, last out of my aim, uh, I took some time off from work uh, right before Christmas. Um, and that was great. I went for three weeks. And then the second time I went on Ziara back to uh, back to Karbala, it was in April uh, of 2016, of 2015. Uh, the first time I went in 2014 for Arabi. And again, uh, I'm alhamdulillah because of my work. Uh, it's very flexible, so I can uh, pretty much uh, um, take the time off if I'm not busy and uh, go to Ziara and then come back. Um, so I'm very fortunate like that. As a, if I were full time, it'd be a bit harder because the max you get is like three, four weeks. Um, so I'm very fortunate like that. My name is Samar Sawi. I'm 26 years old. I've lived and I'm born and raised in uh, Toronto, Canada. I work in an orthodontic office for braces. Alhamdulillah, we were brought up into the religion of Islam, and. Um, I don't feel like I have that uh, strong spiritual connection with uh, with Ahlul Bayt. Praying, fasting, all the um, the main things that Islam do. Um, I feel more as if it's kind of rituals to me and not really something that I feel from within. I don't feel like all the actions that I'm doing, I feel I feel with my heart. And I I, I just I need that that spiritual kick, that, that, that one little thing to give me a whole different perspective on life and Islam, especially living out here in the West. And I, I, I've, always, I've always learned about them, heard about them in Majalis that we have with our families, um, just read about them, seen pictures. I've always wanted to really just go there and experience it for myself. Because you hear it from people that go and come back and you see the changes and I mean, inshallah, I hope, I hope when, I, when I do go inshallah and I come back, I have that spiritual attachment that I feel that I need in this time of my life right now. It does look like it's becoming a lot healthier. Looks like you have been practicing what we went over. Looks good. Looks nice. Well, what I've learned from um, Arbaeen itself is that um, to be more patient, to be more patient, um, to understand and appreciate everything that I have in my life. I mean, it's really hard um, to believe, even myself, that someone with all the sins that I have, I was granted to go to Karbala, you know, um, the land of paradise on, on earth. Um, I still can't believe that I've already gone once. Because uh, I know myself better than anybody else. Um, it's, yeah, it's moving. Um, so I've learned to be, you know, uh, have more patience with, with, with everything. And uh, especially, especially, uh, <laughs> uh, especially during Arbaeen, because uh, there's so many people, um, uh, especially in Karbala, between being Al Haramain and uh, the streets. So you have to really take your time to walk slowly, to deal with a whole bunch of people. And, and one thing, um, mashallah, I've met so many new friends. I've made so many new friends, actually. Um, I went by myself and um, I didn't know anyone there. And you know, traveling, it was my first time traveling so far on my own. Um, you get nervous, you don't know what to do. Obviously, you prepare for it, you talk to different people, you watch lectures. But um, so fortunate to meet new people, the wonderful people. Um, some friends from Toronto, some friends from Australia, some friends from Dubai, France, all around the world. Um, but I'm sure I've, I've, I will learn more uh, once I go again because the first time I went, it was so busy. It was so busy and everything was so new to me. Um, so I'm looking forward to going again and experience more and really uh, take my time and really use the time that I have to, uh, 
visit the shrine more, um, to reflect more. Uh, why am I in Karbala? Hey, so we're in Tafta Tarus, uh, downtown Toronto, uh, it's at um, Dufferin and College. It's Iranian brunch and um, this is the menu. And we're gonna order uh, Kella Pacha. It's a classical, it's a classic Iranian dish, Kella Pacha. So we're gonna order it and then order some tea, chai, and then we'll go from there, inshallah. So I like places like this because um, as an Iranian, I mean, I grew up in Iran uh, since the age of like 11, 12. Um, so um, this is my culture. Uh, I feel very comfortable being at places like this. And it's really important to me to still have my roots. Um, so I usually go hiking every Saturday morning and to I park and then on the way by I come here uh, grab Kalapache or DZ and then uh, go to my local um, cafe get some uh, my uh, get an Americano and then and then just go home so places like this are really important to me I feel comfortable when I was younger it was more of a cultural thing my my faith because you're born into the religion um, so it was more of cultural just following what my parents did but as I grew older, uh, I wanted to explore uh, some events happened in my life and uh, it was it was just like a spark in my mind. Um, I reached out to my mother and my family and I started reading books um, and then um, that really changed my life. So, so when I was younger, I was less practicing, um, and some events happened in my life, and al alhamdulillah, that um, that really shifted uh, my lifestyle uh, and the path to my future. So I became more religious. Um, I took some classes in Toronto, and I attended more more events, more religious events, and I started reading more. Uh, and the classes really helped me to understand the faith, the religion much better. So uh, I'm not just following my parents, I'm actually reading and understanding it. I think there's, a, I, could, I could be completely wrong, but I think there's a hadith by Amir al muminin where he says, um, religion has to make sense to you, um, like mentally with your brain. Um, so it's really important that we're not, we're not just followers because of our parents or culture or whatever um, that we actually understand the religion, Islam, like all the aspects of it, you know, why we follow it because it's a lifestyle, it's, it's, it's a complete lifestyle, you know, um, from the food we eat, kalapache to whatever, everything has to be halal uh, according to Islam. Right now, to me, uh, Imam Hussein is, um, he, he is in some sense, to a certain limit, a role model to me. Uh, I, have, I do have the love for him, but I don't feel like it's the love that I should have for him or the love that he deserves from me, from one of his servants. And uh, I feel like, I feel like, I still, I feel even though I have all that love for Imam Hussein Alayhi some, I still feel like he's a stranger to me. I, I don't I don't have the level of love that I should have for him or the level of love that he deserves from me. And I feel like visiting Imam Hussain alayhi salam at this point in my life will will clear my mind and give me a clear vision and a clear perspective of my love to him. And I feel personally that I owe it to him and to all of the Ahlul Bayt. Hamoudi, when Hamoudi? I'm very much looking forward to uh, being in Najaf again, being in the sh uh, in the Haram of Amir al muminin because, oh my God, uh, you know, when I'm now I'm in Toronto and I'm reflecting on the fact that uh, I was in the shrine of Amir al muminin uh, it's such a big deal um, uh, um, so it's really hard to believe that I was already there once and to go back there uh, I'll definitely 
I'm going to be very emotional for sure. Uh, and to go back in such a short time, uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be very emotional, very touching. Um, I want to reflect more. I want to I want to tell my fl my friends. Uh, that we're in the shrine of Amir al Mominin as a kid, you know, uh, you say, your mother teaches you to say, Ya Ali. Um, and um, to go back again is just, um, I can't wait to go back. So, so the first time that I went to Arbaeen in uh, 2014, uh, I met a good friend, uh, his name is Muhtar al Shah. He lives in Dubai. And uh, he was my roommate, uh, and uh, mashallah, he's been to Kabbalah a few times, so uh, he was kind of my personal guy, uh, and uh, we've been in touch since ever. Um, I don't read a whole lot of books, but when I do, I usually read them on my uh, iPhone. So a few months ago, uh, he had told me how he uh, started reading the Quran. Uh, translation of it and he really inspired me to uh, read the Quran the translation of it as a Muslim I think it's really important that we understand what it says the meaning of it so um, a couple of months back I started uh, I downloaded the, uh, the app um, and uh, I started reading it uh, chapter by chapter so every time I'm on the subway going to work or going to see my mother or family member or friends, um, I pull out my uh, iPhone and I read the Quran, the translation of it, um, and it's really helped me, and uh, him and I have promised not to read any other book until we finish the Quran, the translation of it, and I highly encourage uh, anyone to, if you have the time on the tube, just, uh, just pull out your iPhone and, and read a couple of verses. Uh, it's, it's helped me a lot. I haven't been to Iran in a while, and um, the last time I went to Mesha to visit the shrine of Imam Raza, that was a long time ago, seven, eight years ago. And uh, I've prayed a lot to Imam Raza to invite us um, to to ask his uh, to ask Imam Hussein to grant us the permission of going to Karbala. Um, so I've asked Imam Raza a lot. Um, so I'm looking forward to going to Mashhad to Qom, um, visit both shrines, and just experience life uh, and to travel more and just. Um, um, learn more about myself, about the Imams, what they went through. I've been listening to a lot of biographies. Um, I'm looking forward to going to Kazamain a lot. Kazamain touched me so much during Arbain. Um, Kazamain was, you know, there's something so magical about Kazamain. And I'm so looking forward to going back to Kazamain. Um, the people that have been to Kazamain exactly understand what I'm talking about. There's just, you know, Najaf is very special, Karbala is very special, but Kazamain, the two Imams, you know, when you go to Kazamain, you're walking through the streets and you ask the tour guides, you know, the Imams are buried here. How sad, because they're in the middle of nowhere. And uh, there's just so much destruction around the city, around the shrines, and you just, it, it, it touches you so much more because Karbala, you know, mashallah, it's so much, the two shrines, bigger, mo bigger space, it's built more. Same thing with, with Najaf, the shrine of Amir al Mumineen. And then when you go to Kazamain, it just hits you. You just feel so sad for the Imams. But then when you go in, it's so magical. Um, um, when the first, the first time I went to Kazamain, the first thing I said to my friends, I was like, oh, this is like Mashhad, just the outside of the shrine, the courtyard reminded me of Mashhad. So I was like, oh, this is very much like Mashhad, um, which was really exciting. 
because I was like, oh, okay, okay. After I, after Karbala, Najaf, and Kazamain, we'll be heading to Mashhad. Um, but Kazamain, yeah, I look forward to going back to Kazamain, inshallah. All right, so we had delicious kalapacha. Uh, we had to eat it really quickly because the lineup was gone mad. Uh, now we're on the streetcar, so we've already experienced Subway bus, and now we're on the streetcar, going to one of my favorite um, cafes. We'll get some tea, and then uh, we'll talk some more. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I mean, the past 11 years, I feel like I've been becoming more religious. I've been doing more reading about the Ahlul Bayt, understanding them better and the stories that they, of their life. And I feel like I've reached a level of my life where I need to progress into the next level, kind of, you would say, um, just to, to get that uh, s the strength in the, in the spirituality that I have inside me. For uh, asking for repentance, for uh, using them as a wasila to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and just to meet the Ahlul Bayt, to see their shrines. I mean, these are the ones, these are the people, the Masumin, the perfect people that sacrificed their lives for us. They're, they're one of the main reasons why we're still here today. And I feel like visiting them is, is an answer to their call as well as a huge benefit to ourselves as well. It's again, it's really hard to explain these things. It's, it's the love that you have from when you're little, you know, when you beat your chest, when the name of Imam Hussein, when you hear it as a kid, it's, it's you know, you're, 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 it's a God-given love to you. And, um, um, in the recent years, um, I don't know what's happened to me, but um, the love has grown. And before going to Arba'in, before going to Karbala the first time, uh, I was like, you know what, like, I gotta go, you know, uh, you know, I call myself a Shia, Muslim, this and that, but I haven't visited uh, Karbala yet. I want to experience it. I want to know what it is. We're at Regent Meals, um, sponsored by uh, Muslim Welfare at 40 Oak Street, downtown Toronto. Um, Regent Meals is a program to feed the needy every Sunday, which sometimes I uh, come in in the morning and volunteer. Uh, they open up at 9 and uh, till uh, um, 1 in the afternoon, and they serve uh, lunch twice, starting 11 o'clock. Um, this is done by the Muslims, um, Muslim Welfare. They have many programs, mashallah, and this is one of the programs that they do. Uh, it's called Region Meals, and they feed the needy uh, um, that live in this neighborhood of Region Park. And uh, this is they be they started this a year, so this is a year and uh, approximately two months now. So volunteers coming in the morning, they go in the kitchen and they prepare the food from cutting the food from washing uh, washing it. Uh, making salad, stuff like that. And then we have volunteers in the background that um, serve the food to the guests. So it's it's very much like a restaurant where there's a hall, people, guests come in, they sit down, we have servers. Uh, servers go to the kitchen, grab the food, the plate, come down and then serve it to the needy. And then at the very end, um, they can also take uh, to, uh, uh, have takeout because um, some of them have bigger families and what's great about this program is Muslims helping out uh, everyone from every nationality race religion and this is based uh, the building we're at is a Christian center Christian community center and they've been wonderful to us because they're giving us the space every Sunday to do this for the community and inshallah Muslim welfare will have its own community center in Regent Park Inshallah, in the coming year or two. Uh, it's a wonderful program. Uh, if anyone is interested, um, visit Muslim Welfare and then there's a tab for Region Meals where you can find out more information.
multicultural. At, as a Canadian, as a Toronto is multicultural, but specifically this community, they are very different, different background, um, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, they are Buddhist, everywhere, but they don't look how we look like or what we believe. We stand only what we we like want to like to do together, what we want to improve, what we can do together. Like whatever it is, we have to fight like to be one. Obviously, I feel very excited to, to go back. Very nervous, um, uh, very humbling because, you know, what bothers me the most is uh, from the time that I've come back, you know, when you go to Karbala, you promise yourself that, you know, you're gonna watch your actions, you're gonna watch your mouth. Um, but, you know, it's sad that I've already committed some sins that uh, I had promised to, to quit. Uh, but I want to go back again and try again. Um, apologize and try again. I keep saying the word fortunate because, uh, and, I, I, and I won't believe it till uh, I go back again. And this time around, I'm going with some friends from Toronto. Uh, so I won't be alone uh, there. Um, uh, and um, and it's really interesting um, when I when when I went to Arbain the first time, my friends here were so jealous. So when I came back and I and the first thing they asked me, they're like, "Ali, are you going back? We know the tour is going in April. Are you are you going back?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "You know, you better take us. We want to go. We want to sign up." Um, so I have like so many uh, emotions. Um, for some reason, I'm more nervous now than before, uh, but mainly because of um, because of the promises that I gave to the Imam. But sadly, um, you know, uh, I've gone back to uh, committing those sins. No one is perfect, so I'm trying. Inshallah, I'll be grant. I'll I'll, uh, I'll have the permission because you have to be invited. So no matter you know um, if you buy your ticket, this and that, um, you have to be given the invitation. So uh, I'm just looking forward to it. Inshallah, I'll be invited. One of my fears of going uh, now that I'm going to Ziyarah, Inshallah, is that. Uh, Number one, I'm going alone. I mean, some of my family is telling me, no, don't go alone. You, you don't know anybody there. Uh, what if something happens? God forbid. And then you hear all these stories that are going on in, in Karbala and in Iraq. Everyone telling you, oh, it's not safe. Don't go, don't go. But regardless of all that, I mean, I feel like whatever happens to me, whatever may happen, God forbid, I, I feel like this is something, especially in this time of my life, something that I need to do. And I, I feel like I actually need to do this alone. I need to go alone just to find myself, to find my real meaning of what, why I'm here, what, I'm, what am I doing here. I need to find like, what, what is my purpose in this world? Just to, to understand the reason why we're here. It's not just a matter of, okay, come here, living, live your life day to day, go to work, come back. It's more to it than that. It's a lot more to it than that. And there's a reason why we're here. Family's good? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see you. Alhamdulillah, you know, we are so blessed uh, living in the West here where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given so many bounties to us that we frankly can't, uh, we can't enumerate those bounties nor can we be thankful enough. So certainly one of the things that is incumbent upon us here in the West as Muslims and as people who have been giving wealth is to be able to give back. And of course, this is from the traditions of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, so many, uh, so many ahadith about uh, giving charity, about getting involved, uh, about uh, being a, a very positive part of the community. That's what we've been doing. We've been supporting the needs of those who uh, are disenfranchised, those who are, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, not part of the mainstream society. Uh, and at the same time, be able to demonstrate the, the really the essence of our faith, which is about uh, being able to do good unto others, uh, as we would have done unto us. So thank you so very much for your support. Assalamu alaikum. I, I don't know what's waiting for me when I get to Ziyara. I mean, I am going alone, 
But you know, I, I'm going with an open heart, an open mind, and whatever happens, happens, it's Allah's will. And I know that even though I'm going alone, I'm not really alone. I know that Ahlul Bayt will be with me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching over us. And I hope that I come back a better person, not just to myself, but to my family, and to my, my wife and my son, and to the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. Before going to Arbaeen, I wrote my will. And um, I recommend it to everyone to write your will. Because that was really moving for me to uh, think about the fact that I may not come back uh, with the whole situation and with Iraq and just traveling. Um, it, I, I, so it took me um, it took me a week to write my will, just to research, figure out, because um, I started from scratch. Um, I got the form. Um, and you don't, you don't necessarily need a lawyer if you want to save money. All you have to do is watch a couple of lectures, email your marja. Um, you can do it on your own, uh, especially if you don't have a lot of property, kits, stuff like that. But it was really moving. It took, uh, I went to different cafes <laughs> after work um, to just um, write down my thoughts. And I swear to you, I, it made me cry a few times. I had to, you know, catch myself like, oh wow, you know, there's people around me. Uh, because you reflect, you're like, when you start writing, when you start that, when you put the pen down to write, um, whatever you owe to this person, to your family, you know. Um, it was really moving because you realize, wow, you may not come back. This, this could be the end of it. And you realize how short life is and it just, it moves you. I, it, 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 I, it made me cry a few times. So I highly recommend you writing your will. I have one now. I had to adjust it for this next trip. Uh, yeah, so um, that's really the last message that I have. Um, I'm so grateful. I can never, you know, even if I don't go to this next visitation, um, one time visiting the shrine of Abu Abdullah, that's just, it's enough. Wallah, it's enough. And so if you haven't gone yet, you have to go no matter what age. Um, and we all have problems, be it financial problems, be it timing, be it schooling, be it this and that. Make the intention. And if it's meant for you to go, everything will be taken care of. Thank you.